Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the TBS Crossfire 69, a very interesting product by TBS that combines a Crossfire Nano receiver and an upgraded version of the Unify Pro 32 Nano 5.8 GHz VTX that has a maximum output power of 1 Watt. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to bind it, and measure the VTX output power. In terms of packaging, inside the bag along with the 69 board, which is also available with the built-in tracer receiver instead of crossfire, you can find a tracer or a crossfire TBS Immortal T antenna, depending on your version, a 9 pins JST connector, which is used for connecting the 69 board to a flight controller or directly to an FPV camera, a UFL to an SMA antenna adapter for the built-in VTX, plastic cases that are going to protect the 69 board, double act as a heatsink, and enable you to mount the 69 board on top of a 30 by 30 mm stack, and a tin shield which you may choose to use for extra low nose reduction. In terms of features and specs, on the top side of the 69 board you can find two UFL antenna connectors. The one which is labeled RC is used for connecting the antenna of the radio receiver and the one which is labeled VTX is used for connecting the antenna of the radio transmitter. In addition to soldering pads, it features a JST connector for easily connecting the board to your stack and even though it doesn't have an onboard microphone, it features an audio in port, so if you'd like to, you can connect an external microphone. The bind button is located on the bottom side of the board. It's using M3 20 by 20 mm mounting holes. Excluding the plastic case, the outer dimensions of the board are 27.8 by 28.8 by 5 mm. It weighs 4.1 grams so it is 2.5 grams heavier than the Crossfire Nano Receiver and the Pro32 Nano VTX on their own. The tin shield weighs 1.1 grams. The smaller 20 by 20 mm plastic case weighs 2.1 grams and including the top cover that will enable you to mount the 69 board on top of a 30 by 30 mm stack, the total weight is 2.4 grams. As for mounting the 69 board, First of all, in case you are going to install it on top of a 20 by 20 mm stack, make sure that the board is going to be well separated from the flight controller as it is going to get very hot, especially if you are going to set the VTX to the maximum output power. Then in case you'd like to, put that tin shield and I recommend to protect it with the top cover. So as you can see, this is a very compact and elegant solution. In addition, you can also mount the 69 board inside the plastic case and for that you'll need to put first the bottom cover in the following manner so you'll be able to press the bind button using this plastic part. Then you can put the optional tin shield, connect the VTX and radio receiver antennas, secure the top cover which is also going to secure the antennas and preferably use the included Phillips screws in order to better secure the case. Finally, in case you would like to mount the 69 board on top of a 30 by 30 mm stack, you can simply use this top cover. As for binding the built-in crossfire receiver of the 69 board, first you will need to update the firmware of your crossfire radio transmitter to version 4.62 and above, as otherwise it's not going to be compatible with the new board. Then due to a current firmware issue, which is hopefully going to be solved soon, you'll need to change the frequency of your Crossfire device to 868 MHz and this is only going to be needed for the binding procedure, so later on in case you need to, you can change it to 915 MHz. Make sure that both antennas are connected. Power up the 69 board. Initiate the bind procedure on your Crossfire device, wait for the firmware update to be completed, and now as you can see, the 69 board is successfully bound. Now, in case you need to, you can switch back to 915 MHz frequency. In addition, the TBS multibind feature, which is extremely useful in case you have a couple of Crossfire devices, worked flawlessly. First, you will need to set it up, 
and after initially binding the Crossfire 69 with the Tango 2 radio controller, all I had to do is to update the firmware of the Crossfire Micro TX V2 to firmware version 4.62 and it was already bound with the new board. As for setting up the VTX, the 69 board does not support smart audio protocol, so in order to configure it, you will need to use the Crossfire Configure tool, head over to the Crossfire 69 option, and under this menu, in addition to the normal Crossfire configuration option, you'll be able to set the VTX band, channel, set the output power to 25 mW, 100 mW, 400 mW, and max power, which should be around 1 watt, and you can enable and disable pit mode. You should pay attention that after updating the firmware of your Crossfire device, you will need to rebind it with your existing Crossfire receivers. However, it's a pretty simple process, so in case prior to the upgrade you've used a recent Crossfire version, all you need to do is to initiate the bind procedure on your Crossfire device, and then power the radio receiver that you would like to bind. The Crossfire receiver is going to enter bind mode automatically, its firmware is going to be updated, and then it's going to be relinked with your Crossfire transmitter. As for connecting the 69 board to your flight controller, the easiest option is to use the 9 pins joystick connector. The left pin is the VCC, and the operating voltage of the 69 board is between 5.5 to 36 volts. The next pin is ground, then plus 5 volts out and ground, which you can use in order to power an FPV camera. Then the video in pin, audio pin, which enables you to connect an external microphone, ground, and RX and TX pads. Pay attention that RX goes to TX on the flight controller and vice versa. Then in case you're using Betaflight, under the port section, enable the serial RX switch next to the Europe port that you've just used, and under the configuration tab, set the receiver mode to serial based receiver, and set the serial receiver provider to CRSF. The next thing that I've done is to measure the output power of the new VTX. When it is set to 25 milliwatts, I'm getting about 50 milliwatts, and after one minute, it goes down to about 40 milliwatts. On 100 milliwatts, I'm getting about 165 milliwatts, and after one minute, the output power pretty much remains the same. On 400 milliwatts, I'm getting about 650 milliwatts, and again, the VTX output power is unchanged after a minute. On 1 watt, I'm getting about 1.4 watts, which goes down to 1.2 watts after a minute, and while cooling down the VTX using a fan, I'm getting a constant 1.3 watt, even after running it for 3 minutes. In addition, the measured power consumption in pit mode is 0.8 watt. On 25 milliwatts, it's 1.6 watts. On 100 milliwatts, it is 2.4 watts. On 400 milliwatts, I've measured 3.2 watts, and when the VTX was set to its maximum output power, I've measured 4.8 watts. So overall, as far as I can tell, the TBS Crossfire 69 board is an excellent option in case you are a Crossfire user and you are flying analog builds, and it is actually closer in terms of output power to the full-sized Unified Pro 32 VTX than to its nano-sized version. Because of that, it seems like an excellent option for a long-range setup, and on an upcoming video, I'm going to install it on one of my micro long-range builds and head outdoors and test it out. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.